Hi. How long can I go without talking? How you doing? What's going on? Welcome to the replay. Welcome to Daily Fuel. My name is Bobby, and I am the host of this group. And Brandy's here. Hi, Brandy. How are you? You're now on the list, the Tag Me Every Day list. Thanks for asking and joining that. Um, yeah, by the way, the, so I tag people on the live every day. Uh, I, people can ask for a tag throughout the day, every day, uh, any day that you want. Um, but I do have a list going of people who have asked for a tag every day. So if you would like to be on that list, you can ask me to put you on that list anytime. If you are on that list and are like, oh my God, with the tags, uh, let me know to take you off the list. I'll take you off the list. I, I don't care. So um, it's for you. I, 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 believe me, it doesn't matter to me if you're on it or don't. If, you're, if you don't want to be on it anymore, you're not going to hurt my feelings by, by saying, please take me off the list. Uh, just do it very privately and in code so that nobody else knows and I don't feel like a loser. I'm kidding. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you're in the replay, hashtag replay, hashtag something, let me know that you're here. Uh, if you are live, you can start commenting and uh, and comment the whole time. I'm going to do my spiel and then I'm going to ignore all the comments and then I'm going to finish my spiel and I'm going to come back to the comments and uh, and that's it. So where are we? We're almost at two. Oh, I did that under two minutes today. Look at that. And who we got? Brandy's here. Blake is here. Hello. Hello. How are you? And Kelly is here. Hi, Kelly. Uh, hashtag fueled by Daily Fuel. Nice. I like that. And Amy is here. Hello. Hope you are all feeling fantastic. I am feeling fantastic. I'm going to have a, uh, uh, a sushi date night with my wife tonight. So we're going to we're going to get some sushi and I'm going to make some martinis for us. And we're going to we're going to chill out uh, after this. So uh, and we're done. OK, good night. See you later. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, all right. So and Robin's here. So we can start now. Robin's here. Let's uh, let's get started. I forgot my watch. I don't like not wearing a watch. I feel like naked without it. And I feel like I didn't get dressed for the live. Um, anyway, I, sometimes I forget to put it on. So don't leave. It's, it's OK. It's still me. Uh, all right. Uh, let's let's begin. You can't please everyone. You just you just can't. Uh, you, you you can't. So don't even try. And that's the end of the live. It's like seriously, I don't know what else to say. It's like it's so, no matter what you do, somebody is not gonna like it. It's just, it's just it's just how it is. And especially as artists uh, or people with opinions about things or um, people who create stuff. No matter what we do, no matter what we create, is somebody is going to be offended by it, uh, not like it. It's not going to be their thing, and they're going to have, for some reason, think that it's their job to let you know that. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, who cares? It doesn't matter. And who gave them the right to tell you? Do you go to their house and say, I don't like this kitchen. Why did you do this? And they'd be like, who are you, stranger? Get out of my house. And yet, when it comes to our art and stuff that we do for our lives, or our livelihoods, people have no problem saying, uh, that stinks, I don't like that. Oh, my kid can do better than that. Who, who are you? <laughs> so let's not even worry about these people. But, uh, and it, but even beyond that, that I, I just feel like the world in general is built so that we can't please everybody. And, uh, oh, geez. They just got home and she's taking a shower and I turned off the boiler. Well, they're going to figure that out real soon. Oh, well, too bad. Um, anyway, art. Uh, number one is art, right? So there are three things. I, I got confused. Sorry, because I, I didn't know they were coming home. Number one is art. Um, when it comes to our art, there are always going to be critics. There's always going to be customers who aren't happy with something. There's always going to be people who want you to, uh, they want to pay you a commission to make something that's not your style. It's not the thing you like to do. Whatever it is, there's always going to be somebody who's just like, eh, I don't like that, you know? And screw them, uh, seriously, because art is a personal expression. It really is. It comes from your heart, and uh, you know it's it's got to be something that may, that lights you up, and not what other people want. Now, somebody can commission you to do something, and you're you're like, oh yeah, I can paint something like that, or I can create something like that, or build something like that. You know, I'm thinking of a lot of you who do commissions and and do work. Uh, specifically, I'm thinking of somebody like Hector, who who makes the. Um, the, the steampunk stuff. Somebody might come to him and be like, I, I want a uh, I want a grandfather clock that does that looks like this and has this, or can you build me something like this? And maybe they show him a picture. 
And the idea there is that they're giving him the ideas of what they want to see or, you know, I, w I would like it to be this large or I'd like it to be uh, this color or something like that. But it's, it's under the understanding that Hector makes steampunk stuff and they're going to ask him for something in that genre, right? And they're not, no one's going to come to him uh, where he makes steampunk uh, 3D sculpture creations and ask him to uh, write a song. It's not what he does, you know? And yet, that seems like such a far stretch, but for some of us, people may ask us to do things that don't seem like a far stretch, but may as well be, because we don't do that. You can't please them, you just you just cannot. So uh, one or two things is going to happen. One of, uh, well, maybe not two things, but either they're going to be mad at you that you won't do it, or you don't want to hurt their feelings, so you're like, okay, uh, I'll do it. Now, what happens is they really loved you and wanted to hire you because they saw your other work. And your other work that they saw was probably stuff that was just like pouring out of your heart. And now you're going to make this thing for them because you feel bad, you don't want to hurt their feelings, and you want to please them. Except it's not pouring from your heart. It's it's like, ugh, here, you know? And they go, oh, I don't like this. This isn't what I wanted. You know, and it's like, I wanted something like that thing over there. And it's like, no, this is exactly what you asked for. That thing over there that you're pointing at now is like my soul's creation. You asked me to make something that I could care less about. Don't do it because nobody's going to like it, especially you. And it's, this is your life. You, why spend it doing things you don't want to do? There will be plenty of people who will commission you to do the stuff you do want to do. Just make lots of the stuff. Oh, good. They turned on the boiler. Make lots of the stuff you do want to do and show it to people. And the people who like it will say, hey, make me one of those or I'll buy that one or something like that. So forget about people who don't like your stuff. They don't count. Just forget them. Don't try to please them. Don't even. Number two is relationships. This goes beyond art. This just goes into any kind of relationship, uh, especially, you know, the, the people who are kind of close around you. It could be uh, uh, close family, parents. Uh, it could be, um, you know, uh, other relatives. It could be, it could be... Uh, uh, your boss or something like if you're, if you're working to uh, launch an art career and your boss doesn't want you to leave because what am I going to do with you gone I'm going to have to hire somebody else that sucks I don't want to go through that so they're going to not want you to go you know uh, when you become self-aware when you are working on yourself the way we do in Daily Fuel when you are doing that and you are becoming this powerful spiritual being having the human experience rather than the human feeling trapped here when you are becoming that powerful I'm not going to jump when you are that powerful person right and the art is just flowing from you and nothing is going to stop you except what happens is now you're growing and the people around you start to get uncomfortable I don't know, I kind of liked you the other way when you were kind of lame. You know, I liked it more because I had power over you and I could kind of tell what you were going to do. Now you're so powerful that uh, I, the, 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 the dynamic between us is changing and I don't like that. How dare you change and now make me feel uncomfortable. You should stay the same as you were before and make me feel comfortable again and stop being selfish. And there's that word that Dagmar said yesterday, selfish. People who feel uncomfortable by the way you are growing and changing and want you to come back to the way you were before, before you were awesome, are calling you selfish. They are like, oh, stop being selfish. Stop being all about yourself. Oh, myself, myself, and my art, and my heart, and my blah, 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 right? They don't like that. And they'll use the words against you, right? Oh, it's you're all about yourself now, and you're all about what you want to do with your life, and that's selfish. That is not selfish. Selfish is when I don't like what other people are doing and I want everyone around me to do it the way I say to do it because that's what makes me feel comfortable. That's selfish. Wanting to do what you want to do for yourself is not selfish. It's self-empowering. It's, it's lighting up so that you light up the world. We are the light. Remember that one? We are the light. And, and in order to be the light and shine the light, you gotta freaking light up. So. You're not selfish if you want to work on yourself. You're selfish if you want everybody to stay stuck, stay stuck so that you feel better about yourself. That's selfish. There's a very big difference. 
<sighs> and number three is society in general. And I'm not going to get too deep into this one, but just to sort of put all of this in perspective as like the bigger picture, we live in a world of conformity. Everything is designed to make people fit into boxes so that other people around them understand their place. That's why we have jobs working for companies with bosses and management and upper levels and the higher up levels you go, the fewer people there are. It's a concentration of power. They want there to be a concentration of power and a concentration of money. The problem with it is, is that it's all fake. None of it is real because we are all source energy. Uh, but they're trying to build this like factory town kind of a thing. And, you know, here's your money that you can spend at the company store. And we as artists are like, nah, I'm transcending all that crap. I, I don't live that way. I'm living by my rules. I am creating what is in my heart and I'm doing this. And they don't like that. So a lot of people are going to take umbrage at what we do. Umbrage? I think so. Umbrage at what we, uh, you know what? That's the word now. It's umbrage. They're going to take umbrage at what we do, right? Get offended, uh, is what I meant. They're not going to like it. <laughs> I could have just said that. Um, so, because we are making them uncomfortable. So, it's not just the, the people who are closest to us, those relationships from number two. They're going to say it the most, I think. But you're going to see that society in general isn't built for us. It isn't, it isn't structured in such a way to make us feel empowered in what we are doing. We have to find that power from within because nobody's going to give it to us. That's why we have this place. All right, anyway, that, that's it. Let's, uh, let's hit the comments and see who we got and see what we're saying. And wow, I see a gigantic essay there. Uh, let me see. Robin is not asleep. That's good. Uh, happy Father's Day, says Blake. Thank you very much. Yeah, tomorrow is Father's Day, and uh, and it's Sunday, so I, I wouldn't be here anyway doing Daily Fuel, but uh, there you go. And Brandy says, yes, Happy Father's Day tomorrow, Bobby. Thank you. And uh, hey, everyone, feeling the vibe. Good, Haley. I'm glad that you're here. And morning all. Now nah, it's nighttime. Get with the pro. Australia, you're really messed up. It's uh, you, your, 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 your toilets go the wrong way. The seasons are all wrong. It's winter at Christmas. What the heck? Come on, get with the program. Spiders. Oh. Uh, I turned it on. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the boiler. <laughs> yeah. Um, art is a, see, all right, so here's the deal. So when I do these lives, I turn off the boiler because it is six feet away from me right over here. And it's kind of loud. And you can kind of hear it in the, uh, in the, the microphone picks it up a little, especially now because the microphone's pointed right at the door. I didn't even realize that. Maybe if the boiler comes on, I should put the microphone over here. But, um... So I turned the boiler off, but then I forget to turn it on all the time. So what I did is I made a little sign that we leave in the kitchen. It says, turn on the boiler, and it's on blue paper. And, um, and whenever I do the live, I turn off the boiler, I take the sign out of the drawer, and I leave it on the kitchen island. This way, when I come upstairs, I see the sign, and, uh, and I turn on the boiler. And sometimes, though, I see the sign, and I put it away without turning on the boiler. So that... That kind of negates the purpose. But anyway, they saw the sign and turned on the boiler and my daughter can take a shower. Art is very personal, says Blake, which I think is why we are not good with criticism. Yeah, you know, it's, it is because we take it personally. And this is, this is going to be a future live uh, soon. It's on my list. Um, Catherine, uh, Catherine Ritchie mentioned it. It was uh, how, how, not to get, uh, how not to take criticism so perfectly. And also part B of that is, uh, is like what we lose when we take it personally, you know? And so I'm not going to get too deep into this, but you're absolutely right. We do not like criticism because we take it as a personal affront. We take umbrage at it, right? I hope that's the word. <laughs> and, um, uh, it's it's uh, it, yeah. We we it it. But we don't have to because if we can just remember that these people who criticize our art or say bad things about it or just all around don't like it, they don't matter. And I don't mean they don't matter as human beings. I just mean they don't matter in the grand scheme of our artwork. It doesn't matter. We only need to create the work for ourselves. And the people who like it or respond to it or feel the vibe of it, they'll make themselves known. Trust me, they will. Uh, you don't see anybody coming on Daily Fuel going, I hate this show. Why am I here every day? Nobody does that because they don't show up. 
They just don't. Why would they? <laughs> right? So the, if somebody doesn't like it, just be like, so then why are you looking at it? You know, why are you reading my book? Why are you listening to my song? I told you the story about the, when I made my first uh, uh, song and I made an ad for it and I placed an ad on, on Facebook to generate um, some attention around the song. Somebody wrote in the comments, you are objectively bad at music and should quit immediately. And I was just like, why, why are you here? What do you care so much? How on earth could my song hurt your ears so much that you have to take all this time to think of a clever, not clever comment and write it on Facebook publicly with your freaking face right there so that the whole world can know what an idiot you are. I don't get it. I, I seriously don't get it. I think that people who criticize artists just to hear themselves speak are upset that they're not artists, that they wish that they had our talent and they don't and they just they're going to be like well if i can't have it then i'm not going to let you enjoy it and that's sad because they have their own talents they just don't know how to find them i guess i don't really know i'm not here to fix those people i'm here to help us screw those people uh i wish more people were polite about people's art yeah i do too but they're not going to be so let's not worry about it amy says I'm in the process of making artistic silent boilers. <laughs> that would be great. I would I would not like one of those. They enjoy you struggling. They enjoy you struggling. They enjoy, who enjoys me struggling with what? I don't know what that means. Later she's going to tell me and I'm going to be like, "Oh, and she's going to give me an eye roll." And then because yeah, this is one of those things, right? I, I forgot the context of what the heck. Uh, they enjoy you struggling. You guys enjoy me struggling? I, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. Ah, oh, Kelly. Here we go. Hi. Um, a long while back, I made all these crafty little sign things for my own house and then had the idea to make more. And the perfectionist uh, wants to make money part of me. The perfectionist slash wants to make money part of me uh, wanted to people please. So I went with more commercial themes. Mmm, yes. That were not personal to me. I lost my desire to do it after just a few and made no more. Yeah. Aiming to please them made me lose the fun and whimsy I had going in my own themes. Yeah. Mm. Oh wow. What a what a what a fantastic comment that is, right? Uh, that's what happened to me with um, fill in the blank. A, a million things that I've tried before because uh, I would, that's really one of the reasons that I love doing Daily Fuel is it helped me get over this by talking about it out loud and then hearing myself say these stupid things that I do. And I'm just like, why, 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 why do I do that? There's no reason for that. But yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like, um, I, I started my career as an artist saying like, I, I wanna be an artist and I liked uh, tech stuff. You know, I'm not a painter. I don't, I don't, I draw, I like to draw, but I don't paint, I don't sculpt, I don't do art with my hands. I'm not crafty. I don't like crafts. It's just not me. I like digital stuff. You know, I like singing and I like making music digitally. I like making art digitally. I like using uh, a lot of digital tools. To me, that's where the creative juices flow the most. But beyond that i didn't get beyond that very very far uh, in the beginning i said well what can i do to make money doing that and the web the internet was like a pretty new thing this is going back to the mid 90s and uh so at first the idea of learning uh, how to do websites was very exciting it was a new thing and i like being cutting edge but then next thing you know, I'm just I'm just making websites and I'm making them commercial and I'm making I'm doing what oh, what what Kelly did. I liked the first couple of websites I did because I was doing them my way. And then suddenly I had clients who were, wanted me to do things, you know, their way or whatever. Until all of a sudden I was just like this is not art to me anymore. Now it's a job. Now it's just a job. And I don't like that. Um 
this is art to me. Nobody tells me how to do Daily Fuel. I'll ask you guys, what would you like me to talk about? And I have a running list, but I don't talk about something unless that day I'm like, I'm into that today. You know, it's got to be what I'm into. Otherwise, I can't bring it. If you, if I said to you, that's why some people have asked me, like, can you make a schedule of like what you're going to talk about in the week? And I can't, not because I don't want to help everybody out, but because on Monday, there's no way I, I'm going to know what I want to talk about on Thursday. But now I've scheduled that thing so now on Thursday morning I got to talk about this uh, you know and I'm like I can't I can't think of three things I can't think of what to even talk about you know and the graphic comes out crappy it's not fun <laughs> so it's got to be my thing uh, and so sorry uh, Donna says relationships are very strained and hard at the moment this is because I've decided to put me first right that's exactly what I was saying we put I put me first and now my relationships are strained not because you are they will say it's because you're being selfish you're not but it's because you're no longer paying the same attention to them and and bending over backwards to be there for them because you're doing it for yourself and they don't like that they liked it the old way when you weren't strong awesome Donna when you were Donna, right now well you were never that but you know what I'm saying and uh, so keep being awesome Oh, yes, I'm being selfish. LOL, that's a huge one. Yeah, you're being selfish because you care more about yourself than you care about me. I need you to care about me. Stop being selfish and care about me. Well, it sounds ridiculous when you say it that way. Clearly, they do not understand what selfish means. Blake says, I love this about relationships. Thank you. Ray says, so now not only do I have to tell you to breathe, I have to remind you not to jump. <laughs> You don't have to remind me not to jump. I know not to jump. <laughs> uh, Donna's laughing at something. And Haley says, people don't like people who don't fix, who don't fit in that. Sorry, let me start that again. People don't like people who don't fit in their box. Right. Shove that box where the light don't shine. Absolutely. People want everything to be conforming to them. You know? <sighs> If you had, with most of these people, if you had a conversation with them, really heart to heart and let them know, I'm sorry I'm not around the way I used to be, but I'm working on myself and I'm feeling very empowered and I feel like I'm leading myself somewhere where life is just gonna be more awesome. People who actually love you would turn off that selfish crap and be like, oh, I can get behind that. You know, that's cool. I, I like that. And I'll, how can I help? You know, people, I'm sure a lot of people will get behind it. Sometimes we butt heads with them. You know, it's like uh, I'm working on me. Somebody doesn't like it. And now we're just butting heads. But we can also be a little bit stubborn about it where it's like, I need you to get on board with me being about me now, you know, and they're not because they need to be about them. So in a way, we, we have to kind of be open minded to how we deal with that. Oh, we have a Facebook user. Let me see who this could be. Uh, oh, is it Dan? I love when... Uh, where am I? Uh, no, it's Carrie Ann. Hello, how are you? Uh, I love when... Uh, there's a link at the top of this post. I started adding the link back um, because uh, I, otherwise I forget to add it. Then I don't, I don't know where anybody uh, to tell them where it is. Anyway, if you see the link at the, in this post, it's right. It's in the text of this post, but in the bottom, the last sentence, there's a link. You click that, you give Ecamm permission. And then instead of seeing Facebook user, I see your name and your profile picture. But Carrie Ann says, I love when people start throwing around the word crazy. Oh, really? Yeah. Like uh, you're being crazy. Oh, oh uh, do you mean like... Um, uh, what do you mean by crazy? Because uh, 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 do you mean it this way? That uh, now you're working on yourself and your vocabulary is changing, your attitude is changing, you're, you're, you're speaking in spiritual language now that normal people don't get and it sounds weird to them. It sounds crazy. It's like, what's, what's up with you? I, uh, what, are you what are you up to these days? This is weird, you know? Uh, is that what you mean? Uh, because, yeah, they will throw that word around. And Melinda says, hi, how are you? The power structure is why schools are set up the way they are. Yeah. The word kindergarten means employee garden. The school is set up to lead children through this structure to come out and get a job in 1950 uh, working in a factory to build airplanes and shit for the war. That's what school is. 
crazy. Shouldn't be that way anymore. Uh, and more times than not, is this carry again? Yeah. And more times than not, those at the top have no idea what they're doing. Well, that that's true too. Nobody knows anything that they're doing. Nobody knows what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what you're doing. Nobody knows what they're doing in this world. We are all lost, you know, but uh, we're all tied to source and we're remembering that more. That's the, that's the thing. But we have, we have our days too where we don't know what we're doing. Kelly, oh man, your fingers are just going today. Kelly says, expressive people, AKA artists, do not do well within the structure they want, right? The they meaning uh, society, the, 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 that they. Sadly, I think this is what creates a lot of mental illness, yeah, or dis-ease within the spirit because uh, our expression is repressed. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. Uh, that's what makes this whole thing so healing for me. Yeah, you know, like years ago, if you were caught having conversations like this, people would think you were crazy, like Carrie just said. And they, they'd medicate you, you know? They, they'd be like, you, you, you should take some rest. You should have some Valium. You're, you're, you're nuts because you're not conforming to the, to the norms of society. The norms were made just to create structure and keep this power structure in, in place. And we are disrupting that. Where'd you go? Beginning to please ourselves instead of our supposed place in the structure can be very uncomfortable. Yep. And there's no, so much support to find here. Well, thanks. I'm glad. There, there really is. And uh, it it can't be uncomfortable for the people around us. But it's also uncomfortable for us because sometimes we can get gaslighted a bit to think like, am I right? Should I be doing this? Maybe I should just kind of like keep this job and, you know, do the things and not be so oh, I'm an artist you know it's like maybe 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 I'm weird maybe I am crazy a little bit but no no, no we're not we're not because then you remember no 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 I, because I can't turn this off I can never turn this off it's coming out of me all of the time and to repress it feels way worse than any criticism I get from somebody who's not being pleased by me right I don't even know what a boiler is. Oh, it's a heater. A uh, you know, like a we have an we burn uh, oil to for heat. And some people have electric heat where it's just on, and, uh, and other people have a wood burning stove. It's just the thing that heats up the house, heats up the water. It's summer here now, so we're not heating up the house, but we need it for hot water. Melinda agreed. I have said something so remarkably smart that Lin, uh, Melinda agrees with me, and uh, I'm just gonna leave it with that. I have found, who's this? Is this Dan? Because I saw Dan's face somewhere. I have found, yes, Dan. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Um, I linked you the other day on the link, so come on. Uh, I, found, I have found out recently that I need to find the right balance between seeking approval and not giving a fuck what people think, because I can go from one extreme to the other, but in truth, it's finding the right equilibrium, which is best. Now, this is interesting because this ties into what Dagmar was saying yesterday. Uh, which, uh, if you remember, she made a comment uh, asking me if I had heard of and consciousness, A-N-D, not E-N-D, A-N-D consciousness. And I looked it up and it's kind of about the, the, uh, this feeling that we get sometimes that there are two, there, there are two extremes and we feel torn or stretched between them. And I'd like to do a live about this at some point, but uh, I, I, I only just looked it up today and I didn't feel comfortable yet like talking about it uh, to this extent. But um, yeah, but so we can swing back and forth sometimes where we're such a people pleaser and then we get so upset about it that we just go, Fuck out, and I'm not gonna please anybody and I don't care if you even like me anymore. And I'm just burning all the bridges, right? And then I don't care if I ever see you again and take this job and shove it, that kind of a thing, you know? And, uh, and then we go, crap, I shouldn't have done that. Now I look like a fool. Uh, and, and Neither is great. There's there is a middle ground, and that's what and consciousness is. Um, my wife is eye rolling me, as I said, because I didn't know what she was talking about. Um, 
Comments from Ty. Oh wait, here. Let me let me finish this. People who don't want you to succeed. Oh oh oh. Okay, because she said they like to see you struggle. I thought she meant that you guys like to see me struggle, uh, like on my lives, because I didn't know the word or something. Um, she meant um, people who are the critics, the the complainers, the you're selfish. Uh, they don't want you to succeed. Exactly, because your success makes them uncomfortable. Your success breaks their paradigm, disrupts their structure, uh, makes them feel bad about themselves because they're not succeeding. Uh, I used to feel more powerful than you, but now your life is taking off and I'm still stuck here and I feel like crap now. And I used to like it when you were crappier than me because I could look at you and be like, well, I don't feel so bad because look at you. Huh. Now you're not like that anymore. They don't want you to succeed cares we outgrow people We're, you're allowed to outgrow people and let go you know you don't have to let go uh like a punch in the face you can just say hey uh you know it was great what we had but i'm kind of outgrowing this and we don't need to see each other that much anymore if ever and have a nice life and just move on so yeah who did i skip Haley. comments from toxic trolls on facebook they wish they're to shine brighter but putting others uh, by putting others' flames out. Yes, they feel that they can't shine brighter, but when they put your flame out, then it, relative to your now doused flame, they feel bright again, you know? So that's that's what I was talking about, the crabs pulling them out of the bucket yesterday. The crabs trying to get out of the bucket instead of working together to get out of the bucket, the ones on the bottom are grabbing the legs of the ones at the top and pulling them back down and no crab can get out of the bucket. And a lot of people do that as well. They will feel bad about themselves. And in order to feel better, they will put other people down. Don't let them do that to you. That's what a bully is. That, that's the definition of a bully. I, they, I feel crappy about myself, but I'm larger than you. So I'm going to punch you and laugh at you and feel good about myself. And that's that. And then they go home and they feel shitty about themselves anyway. Um, Robin says, uh, I think the can't please everyone started with my parents because when I sometimes did my chores and thought I did a good job, sometimes they didn't have the same opinion. Hmm. LOL, 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 LOL. Uh, one of my lessons learned early. Ack, instead of E. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes it's that too. You think you're doing something great and somebody doesn't like it or you're creating something from your heart and somebody who doesn't get your heart We'll let you know that, that they disapprove of it for whatever reason. Who cares? Bring it. Bring it. What are we bringing? I don't know. My 10-year-old son never paints, never writes, hates it, LOL. But his creations on a computer are way over my head. And he shows his light there. If he was at school, I'm sure they would kill all his enthusiasm. And they did. Um, I love what you do is the... Love what love of what you do is the most important thing to shine. It really is. It really is. And uh, our job as parents, Haley, I would say, is not to let other people douse our children's light because uh, they don't have the strength yet or the 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 self aware knowledge to uh, to protect it. Um, however, children are also still at that naive stage where they might not even take the criticism the way we would as an adult as a personal affront and say like, uh, you know, until they do, because all of a sudden they do. And, uh, but at first they might not, they might just be like, oh, well, you don't like it. Well, what about you? You know? And so I, I, I've seen that with my kids where some things would happen that I was so afraid was like, oh my God, is he going to be upset about that or something? And, and it wasn't even a thing, you know, um, until it is, because then eventually they get old enough where they start to care about what other people think more than they trust their inner guidance. And uh, and that's where we as the parent have to step in and be their advocate, <sighs> which it sounds like you are. Uh, lion's tooth, the box is shoved up something green. <laughs> Sorry, my writing and phone text has brain farts. Don't make sense like I typed it. Nah, it's okay. I, I, I figure it out. Uh, yep, it's me. Oh, look who got, who, look who found the link. Nice. I see your face now. Thank you. Um, I am still Kermit on here. Kermit. I don't know what that means. You're, I see this picture. 
What are you, I'm, no, you're not still Kermit. You were Kermit the other day. Now I see your face, your your actual face. It heats your water, yes. Uh, the boiler. Thanks for... Who's this? Is this Carrie again? I'll do it to do it to do... The people who don't want... No, yeah, right? Where am I? Sorry, my writing. No, there you are. At Blake and Carrie, yeah. Thanks for what you're doing. Independent thinkers need safe places like this to share their views and ideas. Oh, you wrote your name. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, look who's here. What's up, man? Trevor, uh, there's nothing wrong in putting yourself first. Uh, everyone else does it, and they expect you to just accept it. Fuck the underdog. Be the man, woman first. Yeah, man. You know, there's nothing wrong with putting yourself first. And it's that, remember the whole cup thing, right? Like, people want stuff from you. They want what you got in your cup. They want you to pour it out and give it to them. But if you're not filling your own cup first, then your cup is empty. you got nothing to give. I did one the other day, Trevor, that you suggested, and I tagged you on it, but I didn't even know if you saw it in the replay. Uh, I forgot what it was. It was something you suggested. Uh, oh, yes. Dulling meds. How many get put on them? Yeah, right? Uh, shove them. Same dark cave where light don't shine. Suppository. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, medicating people. All that stuff. Uh, Marsha's here. Hi, Marsha. Uh, hello. Coming in late, Bobby. I listen to people take what I want from the conversation if it's positive and will work with what I'm trying to accomplish. Then I do what I want without coming off rude. I think it's the non-conforming hippie in me. You know, that's that's a really great way to do it. It's like you don't you don't you don't have to go into situations being like, I'm the artist and it's all about me and I'm making what I love and I don't care what you think. You don't have to tell people this. This could be your attitude, but you don't have to uh you don't have to articulate this <laughs> out loud. You know, you can just act that way and you can uh you know, if somebody asks you to do something that's not your style or not your thing, you can just politely say no, but you don't have to be like, how dare you suggest that I make a painting in a style that is not mine? They don't care about that, you know? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't I do not do that kind of work. If, if you'd like me to do something, I do it in this style that you're seeing. The one that you're loving that's getting you to ask me to do this thing for you, and now, but you're asking me to do this other thing. Do you see that other thing anywhere? You know, that's what you're thinking, but you could just say, no, thanks. I'd be happy to do this, but I can't do that. That's all. Oh, hello, everybody. Everybody say hi to Trevor. Uh, the, Robin says, the reason people are told they need to rest and are prescribed meds to calm down is more to get the problem people and rebels out of their hair. That's right. That's it. Sweep the problem away so they don't have to deal with our originality. You got it. That's it. Dan, and consciousness, tell me more. And consciousness, tell me more. I will. I'm going to do a live about that. Uh, it's 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 on my list, I, but I need to study it more. It's it's a new um, it's 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 a new topic to me. Uh, oh, that sounds awesome. The end thing. Yeah, uh, that, that was Dak Moore's uh, suggestion yesterday. Empath will naturally try to understand why people act and behave rudely towards us. So yes, caring about the person instead of maybe their opinion of you. Yeah, we can still care about people that disagree with us or don't like us or we don't have to hate them because any negative feeling we have towards them is only going to hurt us. So there's no reason to do that. We can just sort of remember, remind ourselves that, oh, here's a person who's not in my audience. That, that doesn't matter, you know? When a, when a person is giving a concert in the theater, or a play in the theater or, or whatever, they're not concerned that the person 17 blocks away doesn't like this because they're not there. You know what I mean? It's like, but we, when we do our art, we're putting it on Facebook and the theater is filled with everybody. So they have to sort themselves out. If somebody is alerting you, this isn't my thing, I don't like this, I don't know why I'm here, d who cares, you know? If you were putting on a play, you wouldn't care if 7 billion people loved that one performance because most people on Earth didn't even know you were alive. So who cares? Did that make sense? Um, miser misery loves company. 
yeah, when they're miserable, they want you to be miserable too because the, the misery alone feels worse, right? It really does. Uh, Laura says, learning about and creating healthy boundaries has really helped me with and consciousness. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, those boundaries are are what we're talking about here. It's 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 when you know, you know, that's a really good point. Hang on here. I think the reason why a critic or um, a person, a relationship or something that says something can set us off, can can make us feel uh, bad about ourselves. Like your art is objectively bad, ah! right? Maybe I should take it off of Facebook because that one person that I've never met before and will never see again doesn't like it. You know, it's like, why does that make us feel bad? Why does that make us second guess ourselves? And the reason is we don't have healthy boundaries. If we had a boundary and we just said, look, this is the line. People who like this can come on this side of the line. People who don't like it can be on that side of the line. And the reason the boundary like that is helpful is not just to tell people to F off. It also reminds us that, hey, guess what? There's probably going to be a lot of people on that side of the line. And, I, and occasionally I'm going to bump into them. And occasionally I'm going to talk to them. And I'm going to they're going to be like, hey, what do you do? Oh, I'm an artist. Oh, really? How do you make money? Here's all my bullshit things that I believe about that. And I'm going to tell them to you for some reason. It's like we're going to run into them. But if we know that these boundaries exist, if I ran into somebody and, and I said to them, uh, hey, I'm running this Facebook group. It's for artists. And, uh, and I'm doing this stuff and I'm doing Daily Fuel and I really love it and blah, 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 blah. And they were just like, that sounds stupid. I That would not offend me because I know it's not. <laughs> I'm here every day and I can see that we don't think this is stupid. We like this. Lots of people like it and people keep coming in every single day. So the fact that this one person that I've bumped into and told about and they don't like it had the audacity to say it out loud to try to make me feel bad has no power over me because I have this healthy boundary that to know that there are plenty of people on that side of the line. There are 1,100 people out of 7 point something billion in this group. That's a very small percentage. So thanks. Ah. <sighs> Married her for a reason. Richard said, I had to kick a 70-year-old lady out of my shop the other day because it was obvious I was doing the opposite of pleasing her. <laughs> right, man? It's like you, you just can't... You, some people you can't win with. Get rid of them. Just say... <laughs> you can leave now. You don't have to be here. Your presence is not required. That, that's That's it. Good for you. Amy, I hope you didn't literally kick her because, you know, at that age, you could break a hip. There are those that will never be pleased, not because of how bright your light shines, but because they are trapped in their sad, unhappy job or situation. And you shining bright only makes them feel how dim their light is, so nothing you do will ever be good enough because they just don't know how to focus on ways to make their own light shine. <sighs> not a single piece of punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> There's a period at the end of that sentence. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. That's that's absolutely true. Um, they will put you down to feel better. That's really it. What did I say yesterday? I forgot to post this. If somebody says that you can't do a thing, they're really telling you that they can't do a thing. And they don't want you to believe that you can. Because if you believe it and they believe that they can't, then they feel bad. That's it. Trevor, I saw it, Bobby, the one the other day. Thanks. Oh, good. I'm glad. Uh, Haley, boundaries. My neighbor is replacing the fence, making it higher. Maybe it was my naked son. <laughs> well, that's the thing about boundaries is other people are allowed to have them too, and we need to respect them. Um, Marsha, it's your business. You have the right to be tactfully selfish. Uh, just don't burn bridges along the way. That's it. There's no need to burn bridges uh, unless somebody's not getting the hint or not not listening and you need to say it over and over again. You know, um, you're allowed to like like I don't kick people out of the group. You know, sometimes somebody will post something that's not allowed. I don't, you know, ban, kicked out. You know, it's like I don't do that here. Um, because I ha I, I've only seen one instance of somebody blatantly trying to get into the group just to spam it. I, it's only happened like one or two times. And um, 
So, but plenty of people come into the Facebook group and don't know the rules of this specific group and they post the wrong thing. And I will always reach out to them and be like, hey, I'm sorry, uh, the wrong thing got posted, but here's the right way to do it. And I'd love for you to do it the right way. And, uh, and you know, I, I don't need to burn bridges. You did it wrong, get out. You know, it's like there's, there's no need for that. It makes me feel powerful to do that, but it kind of is uh you know working against my desires to build a awesome group amy that one long sentence really cracked me up <laughs> sorry i forgot the punctuations here some <laughs> thanks amy uh you guys are the best all of you uh, well, except for Richard. Uh, have a wonderful night, guys. It's uh, Saturday, so tomorrow is uh, Sunday. No Daily Fuel. I will uh, I will see you all on Monday. I'll probably be around a little bit. But, um, <sighs> Amy, you get the booby prize tonight unless someone steals it. But other than that, I think we're done. And uh, thanks. Have a great night. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Oh, nope. There we go. See, Donna popped in at the last second. Watch out for the punctuation, please. I'm kind of a grammar nerd. I, I'm, I'm I like, I don't text. Uh, like if I, if I wrote to somebody, where are you? I don't write, where are you? The, are, the letters, you know, I write words. I write the whole words. And uh, the, the, but that's just me. And I use punctuation and everything. Uh, look at this. Uh, night, night, says Trevor. Happy Father's Day, U.S. dads. Oh, thank you very much. And Crimson, Crimson was here. Where were you? <laughs> Crimson, good night. Good night. Uh, nice to see you. And so, oh, look at this. Haley says, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And Crimson says, happy Father's Day. So now Crimson has the booby prize, and I'm going to end this. Have a great night. I'll see you all soon. Bye.